In Sud America due anni fa ho conosciuto un ragazzo con cui ho legato sin da subito. Come stai? Abbiamo vissuto moltissime avventure insieme, tra cui uno dei viaggi più assurdi della mia vita in Colombia. Bernardo, ragazzo di Lisbona, super carismatico, due anni più giovane di me, fuori di testa. Ai tempi eravamo entrambi all'università e avevamo progetti e sogni nel cassetto ancora da realizzare e il suo mi ha colpito in particolare. Mi ha colpito proprio per la sua semplicità che lo distingueva da tutte le prospettive di carriera degli studenti di economia da cui eravamo circondati. In questo episodio di Vida Nova scopriremo il suo perché. Ciao ragazzi, siamo al Mirador di San Pedro del Cantera, vicino a Principe Rea, un barrio vicino al centro di Lisbona. Perché qui mi incontrerò con Bernardo, è un ragazzo portoghese che ha fatto lo scambio con me, ma ora vi spiego meglio come è andata tutta la storia perché è molto avvincente. Yo! Yo, bro! Irmão, come chi è? Come chi è? Tutto bene? Tutto bene. <laughs> so how are you? I'm good, I'm good. What about you? I'm good. How's life in Lisbon? It's been great. Also with the people here and the weather. Look at this. Quindi ragazzi sapete che durante il mio secondo anno di magistrale, quando stavo marketing management in Bocconi, ho fatto uno scambio in Cile. So bro, do you remember when we met that you got the wrong time to go to uni for of the course, of first course. day? Yeah. I didn't oversleep, which is very normal of me, but I really thought like that everyone said to meet at 3 in the university. Well, what happened was that the activities ended at 3. You just showed up. <laughs> I'm super late. <laughs> Praticamente io ero in spiaggia con tutti gli altri studenti exchange che avevamo finito il primo giorno di benvenuto degli studenti di scambio arriva Bernardo e fa ragazzi ma voi siete gli studenti della UAI e gli iniziamo a parlare subito ha detto che si è un grande finiamo a vivere uno sotto l'altro e praticamente passiamo tutti sei mesi in Cile insieme and we did like an amazing trip to Colombia together yeah. me and Robin che ci sto vivendo eh, nell'appartamento qui and so he's from Lisbon Robin came here to study and I decided to move here as well yeah. Bro, I brought you like a gift from oh. your country. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mantegheria, Passage de Nat, one of the best in Lisbon. This is top three for sure. Cheers. E se li mangiate là, sono ancora caldi. So, the incredible part of the story I want to tell in this video is that already started when we were in Chile, right? Bernardo era ancora in triennale, stava facendo lo scambio della triennale, mentre io stavo facendo lo scambio della magistrale, quindi per me era quasi finita l'università e già stavo pensando a quale sarebbe stato il mio futuro, cosa avrei fatto, già stavo iniziando a pensare alla tesi, stavo iniziando a pensare ai colloqui che avrei dovuto fare per trovare una internship dopo la mia laurea in magistrale. While you were talking about your dreams and one of that was opening a bar, right? Yeah. E lui stava già dicendo Sai, quando torno dal Cile inizierò a guardarmi in giro, a cercare dei posti, ho già qualche idea in mente. E we kept talking about this the whole semester, thinking about new ideas, concepts, designs yeah. and everything. It was halfway through the semester that I remember clearly that we started thinking more like about the bar. Like had this epiphany that a friend of mine showed me an Insta story I still remember so clearly. I was in that street in front of our apartment uh, near the beach. I was there walking home and a friend of mine sent me this Insta story about a uh, a girl saying would you be interested in going to a hip-hop bar in Lisbon the idea sparked in me like crazy that um, I should open a bar when I go back to Lisbon like I was finishing my bachelor's as you said I didn't want to go through the natural path that normal people take or either an internship or a master's or start working directly I knew that I didn't want that and the more I thought about and brainstorm with you and the rest about it afterwards the more it made sense I just needed to do a proper project and the business plan to see if it was feasible at the time for me it was crazy because we were talking about dreams in the future that looked very far in terms of time and we still had to finish for you your bachelor's degree for me my master my plan for my future were like having a career in the luxury industry I started like looking around and I had some offers but still we were enjoying the moment so much because Chile was crazy we did so many experiences also like thinking that you were about to open a bar it didn't feel real <laughs> and also like we were not like the most responsible <laughs> during exchange we were just having fun you know c'erano 70 studenti exchange in Sud America avevamo tanta voglia di viaggiare 
viaggiare io non avevo neanche troppi esami da dare perché me ne mancavano solo due e quindi sì parlavamo così cioè sogni di studenti per il loro futuro you brought me here so what is this place this is actually a very special place for me first of all i used to live quite near from here 10 minutes walking ever since i was little i used to come here uh, with my parents and then with my friends and then i remember every girl i ever <laughs> ever dated or anything i would bring here like my first girlfriend i remember i asked her to to date me here like it was either this bench or or that bench like i i'm, I'm not joking ever since i was a kid this has meaning for me and i think it's easy to see why like you just see this amazing view prince Rialo, always my favorite part of lisbon i still have the dream of uh, when i get the money because it's so expensive to live here i would like to live here if i can it feels home it feels like home yeah, yeah. i already been here you showed me this place one of the first places that you showed me when I came here to lisbon last year it's one of the places i remember the most and i clearly remember that i looked at this area and i thought oh, this city is a capital but it looks like a kind of small town but actually it's not that small because if you look the whole area of lisbon it's not that small lisbon in terms of like being a city it's quite small when you see it as a metropolitan area it's quite bigger but yeah since it has so many hills and different places it seems quite small we don't have a lot of tall buildings compared to again other european cities and capitals Do you prefer Italian food or Portuguese food? Come on, fuck you. <laughs> really hard to say. No, but I think Italian. It's so different, you know? Yeah, it's very different. Are you happy to be Portuguese? I'm super happy. You're proud to be Portuguese? Yeah, for sure. The weather is so beautiful, man. When you mix that with like this amazing, beautiful city, we have the landscapes from north to south. They are different, but they are always so nice. We are somewhat similar to Italians. We can be instant friends. We are outgoing people, and if we like each other, we're friends for life. I've had many friends that we started drinking and then became instant best friends. This happens here so much. This was exactly what I was talking about. Amazing weather, so many nice buildings. This is a very famous church. This is a monastery of a very famous poet. So basically, growing up, this was my neighborhood actually. I used to live on the street down from there. Absolutely amazing living here and growing up. There used to be much less tourists, which for me was perfect because I used to take the most famous and historic tram, the electric 28. Nowadays it's so full, like it's it's hard to, to even go in there. And also a thing that is very, from the people of Lisbon, it's very, not legal, but not illegal. Yeah, probably illegal, but you don't really care. So on the tram, we, as a kid, if you didn't want to pay or the tram was too crowded, you would stay on behind it and you would put your fingers inside the tram and there was like a little platform, literally like standing outside of it, like hanging from it. And I can tell you I've done that more than like 1,000 times and it's the funnest way to ride it. It's so fun because it can go like fast and you're like Whoa, with a kid that loves adrenaline. Crazy. But we give the right message and uh, we don't encourage that uh, they never do it. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, this very place, uh, Plaza Luis de Camões, special place also for me because here in this very street, è il primo posto in cui sono stato a Lisbona in assoluto perché qui c'era il mio primo Airbnb. Quindi questo è proprio il primo posto in assoluto che ho visto di Lisbona ed è incredibile perché adesso vi stiamo portando in un posto molto speciale per tutti, soprattutto per Bernardo. This is where you bought the pastéis nata. This is the mantegaria. Yeah, mantegaria. And usually it's even more people waiting in line. Come on in, bro. Welcome to Saudi, guys. che è tipo il centro qua a Lisbona della vita notturna guardate appena arrivato Ron Vivio che era il pub crawl di Champs e ora stiamo andando al bar di Bernardo Sobrio che è la parte finale del pub crawl impegnatissimo raga cioè stasera si fattura hanno finito la birra hanno finito la birra
So bro, why you wanted to open a bar? I think the main thing was that I wanted to go all over like the world and people from all over the world. Nowadays, people from all over the world come to Lisbon and I've had people from places that I never expected to have and it's been open for less than one year. So I already had people from a small island in New Zealand, the, the Mauritian Islands. I don't know if that's how you would say it in, in English. Kazakhstan, like what are you doing in Lisbon, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to get to know their culture, to talk to them, to see what's like in their place, in their homes, in their lives. I think it's the most enriching thing for me. It was my first goal and I remember I told you is that I wanted to create a space where everyone is having fun and is allowed to create good times. Because I think that's uh, what the world needs right now. It's having fun, it's good times because there's so much bad sh shit going on. And people need a break and yeah. I wanted to give people uh, a like break. A and uh, I'm super happy to tell you that it, that's exactly what's been going on. What I learned from my short entrepreneurial life is that it's very important to start from people because what are we working for? Yeah. You know, like even now, for the whole topic of artificial intelligence, are they gonna replace uh, workers? Are they gonna, you know, cancel so many jobs? And it's yeah. gonna. Yeah, but at the end of the day, why are we building all this society? Why are we doing all of this? And it's just because of us, yeah. the humankind, right? Exactly. So I think something that it's in common to the jobs that cannot be replaced is that you are doing something for humans yeah and if you start from there and that's especially your why yeah. and why you're doing that it can be either be having a bar yeah. or selling video courses selling everything. a platform to get to university it can be everything but if that's your why it doesn't matter what you're doing yeah it matters why you're doing that yeah and that's so important for opening your own company and being a freelancer or yeah. an entrepreneur or even being like just a, an employee. Yeah. Ok, sono le 6 meno 10, quindi è quasi ora di aprire. Bernardo sta preparando tutte le cose per fare i cocktail, sta prendendo il lime, sta prendendo la peppermint. Now you are alone, but some other people are gonna come here to help you. Yeah, exactly. So it depends on the day where you're talking about. Of course, uh, during the week we need less people and uh, during Friday or a Saturday we, it takes five people like behind the bar. We are three partners, people that are my friends basically, that I've met for a long time. And basically one of us has to be here the whole week. So what were the main difficulties about opening the bar? I can tell you definitely it was about searching the right spot in the right place because Lisbon is, is kind of changing in terms of where the hot spots are and now this street is kind of dangerous and the other street is not popular anymore. How did you do it then? I think it was a combination of luck, a very good advice. Someone told us that they found their own space by just literally physically walking through the places that you, you would like to have the place. Maybe old people that are not uh, acquainted with the, the internet will not put it online yeah. because on the websites we searched for months yeah. and it was everything. One day, boom, and the prices, as I said, super out of reach. And we passed through this bar, little space. It was not a bar at the time, actually. It was a hamburger place. Mm -hmm. Didn't look that good in terms of the decoration, but we saw the potential. And there was a small sign in paper saying, if you're interested, please send us an email. So that's what we did. The guy was really old. It took so long, the process. It was really like finding our asses. <laughs> Like the best combination we could ask for. The place is exactly where we wanted. Not in the middle of the mess, but like in the very busy street. You kind of have the best of both worlds, having a cozy place in a busy street. The main gratification is to see the hard work we put in. Everything that I set out to do, that I really wanted to, for this to be a bar where everyone, no matter where they came from, no matter their beliefs, where they are, they come here and they have a good time and they are able to connect with people they wouldn't normally to, in the end, just have a good time that's exactly what I see every day people coming up to me oh man thank you so much I love the bar I had such a great night it was a goal of mine but uh, I didn't think that it will happen like the way it did so Bernard, now the most important question which is why 
why you do all this. I think we, a lot of people just go for what another person told them to do and pursue. I really thought about what, what I wanted to do, what I saw myself doing in the future, not just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go the master's and consultant job. And yeah, I think deep down it comes to, to me, you know, what I chose. And uh, because of that, I think I couldn't be happier with the, with the job I took. I think it's very hard to regret something that you chose you chose because you wanted to pursue. What more can you ask for? I think that's what it's all about. Putting your efforts into something and making sure it happens.